In this video, I'm going to show you how you could create a custom YouTube thumbnail in Photoshop from scratch. And I'm going to use two different examples, one with a plain background and one with a screenshot from one of my videos. When you create a custom thumbnail in YouTube, you're really going to stand out in the crowd and you basically want your channel to all look like it's part of a brand. So all your thumbnails should relatively look the same or have some similar themes depending on what kind of video you're making. So when someone comes to your channel or they see your video in search, they could recognize that it's your video. So it's somewhat branded. So I'm going to show you how you could do that by creating a custom thumbnail that's branded in Photoshop. And I'll start with this custom thumbnail that I have here. So in order to create this thumbnail, I had a few elements. One was I had this image of an iPhone and this was downloaded from a royalty free website. You could search for an iPhone template, for example, and get this blank template. And then I took a screenshot and uh, that screenshot was from my video and I brought that into Photoshop and then I used it this way. And I'll show you later in the other sample how you could do that. But in this sample, let me just start from scratch. So when you're in Photoshop, you wanna go and you wanna create a new file and the size is 1920 by 1080. That's a HD video resolution. So 1920 by 1080. So make sure you plug those in and then you could name your title here. I'm gonna name this just tutorial for this one. And RGB is good for the web, 8 bits fine, transparent backgrounds okay. So I'm just gonna leave everything as you see here. Resolution at 72 is good and I'm gonna press create. And with this blank sample, I wanna create a background color. So to do that, I could take the rectangle tool or you could press U and I'm gonna make sure this layer selected and then I could drag and put that right on top. Now, depending on what color this was right here, you see this is set to black. If it was set to red, for example, and I created a rectangle, it would create a red one for me. So de decide what color you want your background to be and then go ahead and select that. So for the Facebook video, I wanted a blue, so I'll go ahead and do blue and I'll make my rectangle right there on layer one. And I could label these two, so I could label this as background. Next, if I go back to my sample, I want to create the name, right? So I'm going to want to name this, but I don't want to do that on this layer. I want all the layers to be separated. So I come down here and press new layer. So now that I have a new layer, this could be my text layer. So to put text, I'm just going to press T and I'm going to get the text symbol here. I'm just going to press right here. Now I could type so I could say change your name in Facebook. And as I type, it's gonna be the color that I have selected up here. So if I select everything, I could change that color to white, if I want the color to be white. And then I could select portions of it and change it to be a different color. So if I click change, for example, I could change that word to be red and not the rest of my phrase. So I could do something like this with it. So I'm gonna select all, and I'm gonna change the font to something like Arial here, Arial bold and I could increase the size by typing in whatever size I want. So if I want a 200, I could do 200, press check mark. And I'm gonna press V here to just move it somewhere else in the frame. So if I go back to this image, I see that I had some red elements, some blue elements, but I also have this black border. So to do that, I come here to my text layer I just created and I double click somewhere around here, not where the name is, but somewhere around it. And I want stroke, so I'm gonna check on stroke and I can make stroke thicker or thinner by doing this. So the size I like is actually 12. I'm gonna press okay. And if you wanna do more with your text, you could double click your text for your text to select. And you have options here. So you have font, you have size. And if I click this icon here, you see this option comes up and you could change the spacing. So they were kinda stuck together. So I could change it like this, press okay. Again, let me just double click here and I want to change the spacing. So change your name in Facebook, put those in different lines. I'm gonna select Facebook. I'm gonna change the color to something more blue, light blue so it doesn't interfere with the background, something like that. And then I'm gonna press check mark again, press V and I can move it. And you see, I could even drag on the corners here and resize, but I could do that with the fonts size also. So I usually like to do that with the font size and not by dragging, but 
So I would put that here. And a rule of thumb with the name on your thumbnail is don't use more than five, six words really, because people are gonna view it on their phones, it's gonna be small, and any more than five or six words are gonna get lost. Sometimes I use seven, but I really try to keep it to five words. Like this is a good way to view a thumbnail as far as font size goes. And same thing, so if I had the image for the iPhone, I'm just gonna drag it from this project uh, the iPhone layer, so which is these three layers here. I'm just shift selecting these. I'm gonna press V and I'm gonna bring them here. And I was holding shift when I brought it, so it placed it in the same spot. So you see that I just, I just brought that into my project. But if that was out of Photoshop and I didn't have it in a different project, I will bring it the same way I did with this Facebook icon. So this is an easy way how you could create a thumbnail. And at this point, if you don't like your background, for example, you could always do things to the background. So I just double click that you could do a gradient. You see, that's kind of much nicer. It's just creating a soft gradient here and I'm gonna press okay. So let's say this is what you decided your final look was gonna be. The one extra thing I always like to do is I like to add a company logo if you have one into the image. If you see my other ones like here, there's a company logo. So if you have a company logo, that is a great way to brand your videos. All my Facebook videos, for example, have a very similar look to them. They all have the logo on top. They all have a similar background, similar fonts. Uh, if they're on a mobile, they always have a mobile. So you want to do something that is consistent from video to video. Let me just jump into this next video. So to create something like this, I'm just going to go through some of the layers with you uh, instead of having it recreated. So if you look down here, layer 22, that's the screen grab that I brought. The background I showed you how to make. So I made a background with the rectangle tool. I made a background on this very first layer. Looks like I did a color overlay. It was a white one. And then I brought in my image. And to do that, again, I'll go to my desktop and you see I have a screen grab right here. I have a couple of screen grabs. And the way you saw them here is that they're flipped. So I'll show you how to do that. But I brought the screen grab and to take a screen grab, for example, I'm on a Mac here. So all I did is I went to Premiere. This is where I edited my video and I did Command Shift 4. And you see that I get that crosshair and I just kind of dragged right there, full screen, and I let go. And if I go back to my desktop here, that's the image it just took. So that was the same screenshot I had before. So let me go back to Photoshop. To bring that in, I'll just go back to my desktop. I'll control click that and then I'll say open in Photoshop. And right there we have it in Photoshop. So I could just drag this down and then I could drag this layer. I'm holding shift, it'll center it for me right where it needs to be. And if I press command minus, I could just bring my whole canvas down so I could see what I'm doing. And if this was the wrong size, I could press command T and then I could resize it. So if it was too small, I could bring it up. And this is was just an easy way to flip it too. I just, you see, I just went to the right and I, if I press V, I could bring it right back and then I could resize it to my frame. And then press OK. And now I'm gonna press Command Plus. I'll bring it back to where it was. This is the same thing I did in the other one. I created text. Now I created multiple layers of text. So each layer of text was on its own. So how to get is a separate text, text layer. So I just created multiple layers for these text. And then I wanted to create these blocks to go behind the text. And to do that, same thing, rectangle tool, the same way you made a background. So let me show you, I'll do the rectangle tool. I'll make a new layer so it doesn't interfere. So this is my new layer and I'll press here and I'll let go over here. And it just made a blue. See, my background was set to blue. It just made a it blue. It's covered with the black rectangle. I'm gonna turn that off. There you go. That's the black one I just turned off. So that's the blue one I just created. So that's how I created each and every single one of these. And then I made sure the text file that was on top of it. So for example, here's a text file how to. So if I select that and I press V, that's how I brought it into the rectangle. So white on black, white on red, red on white, yellow on black. Those are some of the colors you could play with. It's really nice to do. And again, I made sure my branding is there. So this is a transparent logo. It's a PNG file. See that? I'm turning it on and off. So I made sure that's also present in this. So that's a couple of different ways of creating a thumbnail in YouTube. One, using a screen grab like I did here. 
and the other one is by just using a plain background like I have here and make sure they're all branded and make sure your channel has a consistent look and feel to it and all your videos will then see an increase in views and you'll see an increase in subscribers.